Hi there, my name's Ian Robertson. I work for David Foot Limited, just outside of Dorchester in Dorset. So today I'm going to spend a bit of time showing you how I set up my RB26 self-propelled sprayer. The first thing to look at would be your pre-start checks before starting the engine. So fuel, then on this particular sprayer we've got a sight gauge here for the hydraulic oil one the other side for the hydrostatic oil, engine oil on the dipstick, coolant levels. While I'm up on the back of the engine bay on the self-propelled sprayer, I also have a quick look in the top of the tank, just to make sure that everything is nice and clean and that the tank rinse nozzles have worked properly to do their job. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Then we'll move on to the tyres. Check with the manufacturer of each tyre and they want to be run at lower pressure as possible. I like to work around the machine in a nice methodical manner, so I start at the front and work around in a clockwise manner. Coming to the pumps, checking the pumps, I've got oil in the top, then I've got my toolbox, spares in here, diaphragms, air pipes, any connectors that we might need, and then a, a spill kit with absorbent granules and a spade so that we could make a bund or block any drains if worst case scenario happened we had a spill. On this machine it's 12 daily grease points, a weekly the grease points on the boom linkage. So now working round to the side and back of the machine, constantly looking at the sprayer, looking at the hydraulic hoses, the spray lines, looking at the air lines for any signs of any um, fatigue wear on the pipes, also on the main sprayer chassis and also on the spray boom itself, any bolts that may be coming loose, just making sure that everything is in tip top condition. Moving forward, opening the boom out, you'd then be checking that it's loose and good free movement, but not excessive movement. All machines are different, so I'd recommend checking with your specific manufacturer um, as to how they set the boom up. But on the Bateman, there's um, tie rods, stop bolts, so by adjusting them, you can set the boom up to ride really well. So. A rule of thumb is just on the tie rod on the back, a bit loose, but a bit of pressure with your centre finger and the front one tight when opened out. Then you'd be checking for up and down movement so that you, if you push it up and down, it then returns to the middle and also fore and aft movement. You want a little bit of movement but not excessive so that you can ride over the bumps as you're going along. So pushing it now, goes back and forwards two times then settles nicely in the middle and the same with up and down. Gentle pull, up and down, riding back to the centre point. Now moving on to the actual nozzles on the boom, we want to check that they're in alignment in the vertical and the horizontal plane as set out in the NSTS standard. So the next thing to do would be to try an actual physical nozzle output check. So we had the sprayer running at three bar pressure and then we put a measuring cylinder underneath the nozzle, not a measuring jug. The difference is you get a bigger deflection over the wider surface area on a jug than you do over a measuring cylinder. We've set the sprayer at 3 bar, so with an O3 nozzle the output over one minute should be 1.2 litres a minute. An easy way I find to remember this is at 3 bar your nozzle size, which is an O3 times 4, will give you your litres per minute output it works for all nozzle sizes. So having checked it on here, ours was perfectly within range. You really want to change it when it gets to 5% deflection across the range or if the spray pattern visually doesn't look correct. Boom height is one of the most critical parts of spraying. Ideally we want to be 50 centimetres above the crop. One of the easiest ways to work this out is by using a cable tie but don't forget to measure from the nozzle, not the, the spray line, but actually from the nozzle tip. So 50 centimetres from the nozzle tip down to the crop. The choice of nozzles is very dependent on the specific job you're doing. Timing is crucial, but using the right nozzle at the right time will make the job so much easier, better, less drift, so you're getting more of the product where you actually want it. If you aim at it, you'll hit it. 
So my nozzle of choice is an O3 and I prefer to use the Defy 3D. So I use that in pre-emergent work, alternating forward and backwards, plus also up to T0. And then I'll then use it at T3. This gives good all-round coverage, the forward and backwards covering the clods early in the pre-em, plus also later on covering the ear. In less than optimal conditions, I may use the Amistar Guardian Air, a fine air induction nozzle. So I'd use that at T1, T2, and also in sub-optimal conditions. It still does a very good job. The third and final part of reducing drift is the forward speed. I like to drive about 12 to 14 K depending on nozzle size and water volume. I find this gives a good output on a daily basis, plus also you don't get shadowing and then you don't get turbulence behind the machine as well. There's a plethora of information out there on the internet, loads of apps to download. The technology is there to help us and make our job better and safer and do a better job every day.